Shalom Hag Sameach. This is the second part of Restoring All Things. We'll start with Colossians 1.12. In where in the Apostle Paul instructing the Colossians gives the overview, the big map template of who Jesus the Christ is and the mystery of his work. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Jesus Yeshua said, and John said about him, he came to give power to those who would hear his name and believe. He gave those people power to become children of God. He was the light. Verse 13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That is the kingdom of light in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. He is before all things. And by him all things consist. That could only be God. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things into himself. Why? Because things were fallen and in darkness and they had to be brought back into the light. And the blood of Jesus brings us back, translates us into light. That's white, white light. I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Ah, there are things in the heaven that needed to be reconciled back to him, and we'll discuss those. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, he is now reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof Paul I made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and lift up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest by his to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ah, what is this mystery? Christ in us. He's the hope of glory. But Christ could not come in us until after his blood sacrifice the, and that translation into the light of darkness and then the glory of God could come in and fill us Jesus came and appeared in John after his resurrection to the disciples in the in a hit inner chamber and the doors were locked and he breathed on them and said receive ye the Holy Spirit and they were filled with the spirit prior to Jesus resurrection They were not filled with the Spirit. The Spirit of God could come upon them, but they were not filled with the Spirit. This is whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ, whereunto also I labor, striving according to this working which works in me. Now let's look a little closer at that work of who, uh, what Yeshua did from Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews in chapter 9, 6. Now, when these things had thus been prepared, that is the tabernacle and all the implements put in place and the preparation 
to enter into service. The priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle performing the services. These are the, the holy place with the showbread, the menorah, the altar of incense, etc. Seven, but into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year and not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. Isn't that interesting? The, this, the other sins, the ones committed uh, with knowledge, had to be repented of. It's the ones that, the sins that we do without knowing that we're sinning. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. So this implies that the first tabernacle had to be done away with because the net, there's another tabernacle that's going to be made manifest. Who is that tabernacle? It's Jesus in the flesh, Emmanuel, God tabernacling with us. Verse 9, it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. In other, in other words, it's only, verse 10, concerned only with food and drinks and various washings and fleshly ordinances being imposed until the time of reformation. Ah, so these were external observances that couldn't cleanse your conscience. Uh, until the time of reformation. What does that mean? Reforming, reworking the old tabernacle, bringing in the fullness. Okay, verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands that is not of this creation. He's the tabernacle. It says right here, he's the high priest of the tabernacle, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all. Once for all. Only once. One time sacrifice, it's a done deal. He said on the cross, it's finished. Having obtained eternal, eternal redemption. What, how did he obtain re eternal redemption? He created. Everything was created. What we saw in Colossians. By him, in him, through him, in heaven and on earth. And he brought back, he gave us the power to become sons of light, to enter into the kingdom of heaven. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of flesh. Okay, so these are fleshy ordinances, so they were dealing with the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, that is God's blood, his son's blood, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Because it's a spiritual issue. Your conscience is in darkness. You are walking in darkness. You were When you came into this earth, you were in darkness. And the flesh of anything less than a spirit, the spiritual God, the God who created all things, this is the only thing that could usher you into your eternal redemption, your internal inheritance, could bring you a, a spiritual conscience, he himself, by the spirit. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So he's calling us, and he wants you to receive the gift and the offering that he is as the high priest, the Kohen Hagadol, and the you know, uh, Day of Atonement. For where there is a testament, there all, must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Okay, so if you have a, a you know, last will and testament it doesn't come in operation until it's dead the person the testator the person who wrote it is dead for testament is in force after men are dead since it has no power at all while the testator lives therefore not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood okay because god was saying these are the carnal ordinances and these are the regulations 
and you need to understand what I'm going to do for you when I bring in this reformation. For when Moses has spoken every precept to all people according to the law, he took the blood of gaffs and goats with water, scarlet, wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no remission. Why is it purified? Because their life is in the blood, and it's an exchange of life, blood for blood. And first of all, when Moses gave the blessing, he says, this is the blood. He, he sprinkled it first on the book, the book of the law, and the statutes and the commandments of God, and then the people. So he's bringing them into order. And then the tabernacle and all the vessels of ministry. And the tabernacle and all the vessels of ministry speak of the heavenly things. The heavenly. So first his word, the book itself, was, was purified. He's the word made flesh. Then he purified the people. And then he cleansed the heavenly tabernacle and the vessels of ministry. And here we'll see this further. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of things in heaven should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with the better sacrifices than these. So the order, this is the order of God's work that was laid out by these ordinances. It means the order. This is the pattern. For Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven himself. Now, any earthly priest could not enter heaven himself. They, it was closed to us. The angel with the sword, the garden of Eden, the, those things, because we walked in sin and death. And the life blood of Jesus opened that way. But he went into heaven now to appear in the presence of God for us. He tore open the veil of his flesh, not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most ho holy place every year with the blood of another. Then he would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once, at the end of the ages, here we are at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away, that means he was made, he came on in flesh to put away the sin by the sacrifice of himself. And it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly await him. He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation, for salvation. This is a restoration. He will, he will restore all things back to himself. He's, he's reconciling them, all the things in heaven. This is part of the pattern, the process, the timing, the, the times and seasons, the spring feast, the fall feast, you sow, you reap. This is the ordinances, the order of the Lord God Most High. Let's look at Hebrews 10, 9-30. Therefore, brothers, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, that's us, now we have access into the holiest of holy. Because of the blood of Jesus, before we didn't have access to it. By a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, which means that we, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. God did this. He brought us into light out of the darkness and our bodies washed with pure water. The water out of his belly flew, flowed living waters. And he said, if you drink of me, you will have eternal life. As we drink of him, as we partake of the communion table, the manna from heaven and the blood of cleansing and making us clean, pure waters of the Holy Spirit. And to, to, to enter in, because now Christ in you, the hope of glory, the Spirit operates in you, you operate in behind the veil. You can go into the Holy of Holies. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some 
but exhorting one another. And so much more, the more as you see the day approaching. What day? It's appearing the second time for salvation. <laughs> and, which is the restoration of all things. For if we sin willfully, or part of the process of the restoration of all things, I should say. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Look, you, you can have, if you go back in your sin and continue to sin, you, there's no sacrifice left for you. For, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much more, more worse punishment do you suppose we will all be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? The, this is a higher uh, 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 testament. This is a higher ordinance. This is a fulfilled. This is the perfection, and we can't turn against it, for we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. So therefore, it is a fearful thing, fearful, fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If we've been given a revelation of truth, backsliding is very dangerous. Willful sin and turning against, turning against what? The blood of the covenant by which he sanctified the, a common thing. We were the common thing. Or the articles, and but it's us. We were the. He sanctified. He's made us holy. He set us apart. We weren't profane anymore, and we insult him when we trample the Son of God underfoot. Uh, we need to have a reverential, fearful awe. That's the, that's why the dress rehearsals, the days of awe, are to remind us that it is God that brings the judgments and the discipline and the rods of correction and His laws. And ordinances are to, to point us to him. And where are we going? What is the, the, the destination, please? <laughs> Hebrews 12, 22. You have, but you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Now here's the order, order on Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. And we're, we're going to come into this in, in the next, um, in this series. We're going to break this open a little more. But this is behind the veil. And this is the heavenly Mount Zion in heavenly Jerusalem. And there are companies of angels. There's the general assembly, the church of the firstborn that are registered. Of course, God, the judge of all, and it's to the spirits of just men made perfect. And then Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And the blood of sprinkling. Here it is. The blood of the sprinkling, which speaks better things. Okay, the word that gives us life, that was made flesh. That is speaking because the life is in the blood that causes causes us. Because of that, we get gives us the power to become sons and daughters of light. Children of light, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he's promised, saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but the heaven also. Ha! Huh. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. What, and what does it mean? Those powers of darkness that have been ruling in heaven are being shaken and being expelled by his blood. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. 
for our God is a consuming fire. This shaking is seo. It's to vibrate properly sideways or to and fro, to agitate in any direction, to cause to tre tremble, to throw in a tremor, tremor, excuse me, a fear or concern, to move, to quake, to shake, everything that can be shaken. Since the time of Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur, the, everything's being shaken. The heavens and the earth are being shaken in this time, and we have to serve God with reverence and godly fear, lest we trample on his blood. And we don't want to do that because the judgment is more severe for those of us.